What's going on? Today we're going to be adding gel to this Harley Davidson motorcycle seat. This seat is actually a street glide seat. It's a 09 to 23 and it fits the electric glide, street glide, road glide. It's all the same seat. Um, there's different shapes and design, but they all fit the same and fit on the same bikes. So. What we're going to discuss is if you watch any of our previous videos, a lot of times we add gel, orthopedic gel to motorcycle seats for customers for specific reasons. Um, tailbone issues and butt burning, that's the only reason we do it. If you have a seat that we cannot sculpt it and reshape it, then sometimes we'll put orthopedic gel in there to solve those two issues. It does not work for cheekbone or for um, tailbone issues. It doesn't work for your inner legs rubbing, any of that stuff. It's specifically for butt burning and cheekbone pain. So on this seat here, we're doing something different because we actually are going to modify the foam. We already took the seat cover off. If you need to know how to take a seat cover off, please refer to some of our previous videos where we actually go through and tell you the proper way to take off the seat cover when you're gonna reuse it and you don't wanna damage it. So with this seat here, normally, like you heard me say, is we're gonna add gel to the front and to the rear and it's for when we don't want to modify the shape of the seat. This customer does want to modify the shape of the seat. We're going to lower him and we're going to actually narrow the sides, which is pretty much the most common thing we do on all Harley Touring seats. Get you down, narrow the sides. A lot of times we shave the front because what happens is you feel like a lot of pressure up front, a lot of pressure in your legs, and even if you're taller, it, the, the width of the frame actually pushes your legs out, so by narrowing it, it makes a huge difference. You do have to be careful when you narrow this though, not to cut too far into this because that'll take away some of your actually seating surface for your actually butt area. Um, normally, when we sculpt the foam and do all this, we don't add gel to it, but because we're not changing the actual foam itself, we're going to use the gel and kind of substitute the, the, te the form feeling of the foam. So this foam is a little bit softer. It is conducive to more butt burning. We get a lot of people that say it gets hot because when it's a soft foam, it vibrates and that's what gives you your butt burning. Um, and since we're not changing it, we're just gonna use the gel. Now with the gel, what we wanna do is we wanna look at each rider, see their height, weight, and shape. If it's a small guy or gal, and they have a narrow butt, and they're sitting in here, you wanna make sure that your actual cheekbones are on the gel. You know, if we had a seat like this and you had a bigger butt and you had a cheekbone over here and here, it's gonna be half on the gel and half off the gel, which is not gonna be good for you. So what a lot of times you'll do is you'll make sure that this piece is on your cheekbones. We cut it out for the tailbone because orthopedic gel is firmer than a biker gel. We do not recommend biker gel because biker gel is very soft. It doesn't really add any value to anybody. And what happens is when you, if you do have to put it up any vertical surfaces, it kind of globs down, which you don't want. And it is more liquidy. So the orthopedic gel is a lot firmer and it's a nicer gel. Um, but we will not put it where your tailbone is because we don't want any pressure. It's just for where your cheekbones are. And we do not put it on the inside of your legs because it doesn't offer you any benefit. You really want all your support on your cheeks and your buttocks area and not on your inner legs. You could notice this Magilla Gorilla behind me. Um, you know, my good friend Popeye, <laughs> who is um, a coworker here, mm -hmm. and he is learning to actually sculpt foam, do our gel inserts. Um, doing what we do on the motorcycle seats is very difficult because or challenging because you almost have to have auto body knowledge and you have to have artistic ability because what happens is you could only put the facts in lower someone narrow someone bring it in do all the, the basic logistics of getting someone to sit in their seat but there's always an artistic value that you need to have you need to create it so that seat looks good a lot of people you'll see they'll they'll cut it down their seats will be all choppy and boxy and stuff like that and they get you at your right height they narrow your legs they do those things but then they always miss the the kind of nice aesthetics of a nice looking seat so tony's very artistic and he's been doing auto body for Artistic, no, artistic. Yeah. <laughs> artistic for, I've been doing auto body for his whole life. Um, and we use a lot of the mm. same tools. And it's not because a lot of people ask us this, that there's like, well, there are schools you could go to for upholstery now, but there's not this like secret formula of tools that you want to use. 
a lot of stuff you use based off of what you feel comfortable with. And because I originally started, I was in the auto body world mainly, and I really started to enjoy the upholstery side, I would just grab tools that we have. So you'll notice a lot of our tools are three and a half inch grinding disc, uh, two and a half inch grinding disc. We use cheese graters and we use a lot of tools that we use in the auto body world, just because for me, it's comfortable, it's natural. It'd be comfortable and natural for, right? for you too. Not as shaping. Yeah. Yeah, you think like back, we are older. Yeah. So when we started doing auto body, you would use cheese graters. Cheese graters are these things which a lot of people don't even see anymore. And the old timers used to put a ton of Bondo on the car and then it was so thick they would use these to scrape it off. Well, mm. we always had these around and we stopped using them years ago, but for the shaping the foam, it actually works really good for us because it is just conducive to how we've been trained and how we work with it. And then the other tools that we we're showing you, you'll see a lot of our bigger grinders. So we have a, one grinder that's clearly marked upholstery. If anybody from the body shop or metal shop grabs one of these, you'll see me snap because we could actually put these nice 36 grit grinding discs on there and it'll last a really long time because we don't hit any metal or we try not to hit the fiberglass plastic. Sometimes you do, but it lasts a long time. These are really good for carving big areas and for flat areas. A lot of shops don't use these because there is an art to using them. Um, we were training at over there and uh, our previous employee, Mark, a couple weeks ago and trying to get them to use this. It's, uh, you have to get this certain groove. And I thought Ed would get it better because he skateboards. And what you want to do is almost think of it as a skateboard ramp. <laughs> you get a transition and you have your vert and you got to get your hand to get that nice groove to it. But the trick is you pull the trigger and let go. So you're always coming down with a trigger off. So it kind of, you're using the air to slow the tool down. And it's similar with the small two and a half inch disc too. And these are good because they don't get you into as much trouble. I am using a coarser grit that really cuts it because um, as much as you'd like to use a small finer grit and take forever on a seat, people do want their seats. So we have to do it productively. These cut it in the perfect amount of time so that we could get it shaped quickly and done quickly so people get their motorcycle seats. All right, so one thing I want to talk about before we start cutting the seat apart is the width of these seats. So Tony, turn yeah. around, right? We're, touch your butt cheekbones. Where are they at? Okay, say so you got the bones. cheekbones here. Yep. Okay, so your cheekbones are, well, they keep growing, but 11 <laughs> inches wide, right? So you come to your seat, and 11 inches is pretty much edge to edge, and that's your cheekbone. So a lot of times people assume that just because the seat is this shape, their butt is that shape, but it's not. So what ends up happening a lot of times is your butt cheeks are actually on this curved piece. So even though it looks all dished and nice, sometimes it's better to have a flat seat and not have a dish because your cheekbones are on top of these points, which are adding more pressure. Also, when we put the gel on, if you look at it, if the average butt is somewhere around 11 inches wide, we have gel to gel in both those corners. So that's literally 11 inches. Now, if you look at the back gel here, right? I'm gonna spin this around. The seat itself, is only seven inches. And I know, I'll, I'll say this politically correct, all the riders that are riding, their partners in the rear are, unless they're really skinny, you have an 11 inch cheekbone, which is here and here, right? So now you're on a seat that's basically seven and a half inches. So adding gel to this to me is a waste unless you're cheekbones are seven and a half inches. So that's your, your butt is this big, right? So that's pretty small. So we're gonna add gel here. Um, he just wants to add added comfort for the rear passenger. The problem that I have when doing this is your cheekbones are farther out than the gel. So now you're sitting on your inner parts of your buttocks, which are um, not really supportive. So whether it helps or not, I, I can't really say because my butt's a lot wider than that and I never ride on the back of a bike. But um, we're gonna add the gel to the back here. So what we're gonna end up doing is just this gel, we're just gonna slice it, cut it out pretty much the entire piece. And the front one, we're gonna do the opposite. We're gonna have this at a diamond shape, whatever left over from here and here, we're gonna utilize to give him more cheekbones. So if he has to scoot forward or backwards, um, there's gel there. But we can't mark this out until we cut it down um, and lower the seat because once you change the profile of the seat, everything changes. And Popeye- well, Yeah, because now would that help in like a long distance? Like there's a lot of people that complain like, oh, my butt cheeks asleep, falling asleep, my legs falling asleep in a long distance. That helps 
more. Yeah, a lot that. of people say, so the gel, which is a good question, is a lot of people think gels for like instant comfort. Mm -hmm. Because it's orthopedic gel and a firmer, your first 30 minutes to an hour, you really don't feel. It's when you start riding like an hour, two hours, three hours, six hours, 10 hours, then it really starts absorbing all the friction and all the road noise. Ooh. And it's actually pretty impressive because I like, I had this on the uh, sewing machine thrown one time and I had to sew for like 12 hours and I was just like, my butt was hurting. And I said, well, we got this gel, let me try it. And up until then, I never, I thought gel was BS completely. Then I put it on the throne, I did it, and I was like, holy cow, my butt wasn't sore. It really does help, but it's over a long term. So if you're a bar hopper and you're 20, 30 minutes, you're, you're not gonna notice the benefits. But if you do some serious touring where you're riding one to 12 hours, um, then you really, really will benefit from, benefit from this. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna narrow this down, lower the seat, get it into position first, then we'll put our gel in it, and you'll see the difference of how once this is narrowed, how this gel really takes up a wholly diff totally different um, profile and shape.
see here, the seat is all set. We put the original cover back on it. So this is a good example to see if we lowered the seat a little bit over an inch, narrowed both sides and reuse the factory cover. Sometimes you get this little bit of waddle in here, which will go out in the sun. We heat it up and stretch it and it's slowly going out. But um, this is one of the downfalls when you have to overstretch a seat cover that was made for a seat that was a lot bigger. So now this seat has gel front and rear. It weighs like 600 pounds, very heavy, very hefty. Um, I think he's gonna really enjoy it. So if you like our channel, please. Subscribe. What else? <laughs> like. Like. Share, share, follow, follow, subscribe, subscribe, and the little ring the bell. Yeah, ring the bell. <laughs> <laughs> he can't handle the pressure. See, so you got me on those. <laughs>